So uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the C++ version now of uh, the Polkadot.re. Uh, so this is called Kagome. Kagome in Japanese is like a reference to like a cross-thatched pattern. So it's kind of like the image of different things coming together, you know, multi-chain, um, interledger, different connectivities. It's, uh, it's what this is all about. Um, my name is Makoto Takemiya. I, I'm, I don't look like a typical Japanese guy, but I moved, <laughs> I moved to Japan 11 years ago, and I became a citizen four years ago. So I changed my name and, and kind of um, did this. I'm a, kind of a researcher by, by background. I used to work in a neuroinformatics lab, and uh, I kind of got into blockchain in 2013, and it, my life has never been uh, the same since. Um, so my company, I found it three years ago. We're about 60 people now. It's called Sora Mitsu, which means it's a poetic term in Japanese mythology, meaning to see from the sky. And uh, the, we're trying to create decentralized technologies that can help uh, make the world a, a more efficient place. And so we created our own blockchain a few years ago called Hyperledger Iroha, which is a uh, part of the Linux Foundation's Hyperledger project. It's all open source, Apache 2 license. Uh, and we're using it for some really cool projects like working with the National Bank of Cambodia. Uh, we're working with the CSDs of, uh, so the CSD from Moscow Exchange in Russia and KDD in Slovenia. And, uh, and also works with some banks. But of course, we're also working on uh, this project here. So Kagome, uh, which is the C++ uh, runtime environment. Um, so our, our technology is kind of used for a lot of different things. So for example, this is one uh, instance of an application we made uh, called Bakong. This is actually uh, the first live uh, version of a central bank digital currency that was launched actually last month in, um, in Cambodia. We've been working with the Central Bank of Cambodia for the last two years. And we're also working on a really cool system called Sora. Um, but uh, today I'm going to focus mainly on uh, Kagome. Uh, so this is the logo up there and uh, some Japanese text. Um, so this is really the framework for, as, as the previous speaker Amin said, uh, it's really a framework that can be used to create you know, many different components and, and can be the foundation for a decentralized uh, web. And uh, the main components that we've, I'm going to focus on today are work on the networking layer, uh, so libptp and then consensus and wasm. So the stack we're using is C++17. It's a modern and very uh, different language than you might have used if you'd used C++ 10 or 20 years ago. Um, so it's, it's really uh, kind of a very, I don't know, it's, it's a very innovative language that has many millions of programmers around the world. So that's one of the reasons why C++ is a good target for also having a Procodot uh, runtime environment in. Um, for networking, we've used a lot of things with a Boost uh, ASIO library. Uh, we use uh, Binarian as our WASM interpreter in C++. Uh, for dependency management for this project, we use hunter.sh, which is a great library in C++, if you're familiar with it. Um, and of course, we, use, we support different major cryptography lib libraries, and we use uh, LevelDB uh, for storage. So this is uh, the overall architecture. And what I'm going to do is kind of zoom into this real quick to kind of show you how this works. So this is actually um, a diagram of how the uh, repository is, is laid out. So if you wanted to contribute to the project, uh, this could be somewhat uh, useful. So let's go into this a little bit. So everything kind of starts like down here uh, in this extrinsic API, where if you want to create a transaction, uh, you send it through this API, which can then go into a transaction pool. And then from the transaction pool, uh, the current block, uh, the, the, the current leader who's making the block proposal and the proposer can come here and the proposer creates a block proposal from the transaction pool, which can then uh, go over here, it comes into Babe, and then it goes into consensus through Babe, and then gets finalized up in the corner by Grandpa up there. And uh, then you have the, the block storage, which is a tree structure, uh, and you have the tree and then the key value map for the block. And uh, you've got the networking with libpdp over here. So you've got, as part of the consensus, uh, connected to the networking services. And then over here, uh, you've just got the runtime executor, which uh, executes the different um, uh, functions. So to step into this a little bit. Um, so this is where, if you want to create a transaction and then send it to the network, you would uh, send it into this uh, type of API. Uh, so this is where the, the transactions are submitted to the node and then it goes into the transaction pool. 
And then once in the transaction pool, then uh, the transactions can be used uh, to be included into a future block. And this is done, of course, through the proposal mechanism. And this goes into BABE. So BABE, uh, in our implementation C++, uh, this is still a work in progress, uh, but uh, I think the roadmap has it to be done uh, next month. So BABE and Grandpa should be fully implemented next month, which I think is about on par with what Amin just said for the uh, Go implementation. And, uh, and then, of course, finalization comes using a PBFT-style uh, consensus for finalization in uh, Grandpa. For the uh, networking, we use uh, libpdp, so we actually implemented this in C++. So libpdp um, was, is very highly supported by protocol labs, or, <laughs> or created by them. Um, so they, they did a great job helping us with our implementation. And uh, libpdp is aiming to be kind of a foundational modular system that can support many different types of transport protocols, so TCP, UDP, et cetera. Um, and it can be really uh, efficient for reusing different sockets, uh, so multiplexing connections. And uh, you can easily have encrypted channels like TLS protocol. So uh, we use, in our implementation, a Boost uh, Async I.O. Uh, and this is based on different callbacks in, in, the, in the package. And all of the code in the libpdp, in the future it will be its own repository, but right now it's under Kagome, underneath the core slash libpdp. And I'll put the link um, to the repository at the end as well, uh, in case you want to check it out. Um, so, uh, to, to really be modular, the adapter pattern is being used for this, so uh, there's many different ways this is done, uh, but one really cool thing that libptp has is, the, uh, is this kind of chaining of different things. So, for example, if you want to use IPv4, uh, you put IP4 slash, you know, the IP address slash the protocol TCP, and then um, port number, like 1337. So, this is really human readable in many ways, and uh, when it's actually used in code, um, and there's no time really to show a code example, but uh, this is really very easy to read and to maintain. So uh, the different users uh, can implement these adapter interfaces to extend the, the PTP. So we have a transport adapter, a security adapter, and a, a muxer adapter for multiplexing. So the transport adapter, uh, this kind of connects to remote peers, and it sets the handlers also for listening for incoming connections. And um, right now, we only have the TCP implementation, but in the future, um, I think uh, UDP is the next uh, protocol we want to implement. Um, and then in theory, you could implement other protocols too. So again, the, the, uh, the whole goal of libptp is cr to create these different modules, modules that you can then um, use in again and again in different applications. So the security adapter uh, takes the raw connection and it, uh, it turns it into a secure one uh, using the protocol that you're using. And this, uh, this includes also doing a handshake uh, agreement with the, the remote peer. So uh, one peer proposes the protocol that they want to use and the other peer would either say, you know, the same protocol that they want to use or they wouldn't uh, return a proper response, in which case you would have to propose a new protocol. So you, you have this agreement. So for example, if you use uh, like TLS, TLS version one and one, another node uses TLS 1.3, um, you could do this type of agreement to choose which version of TLS to use for the two nodes. Um, muxing is the multiplexing over the connection. So th uh, actually libptp is really efficient uh, for this. So uh, instead of maintaining a pool of different connections between the same server, which you would have to do because um, there's different types of data that you need to, uh, to share with different peers at, at different stages of the, of the, of the pipeline. So um, instead of opening multiple, multiple connections, you just have one connection that is then multiplexed uh, using this protocol. And currently we just have a Yamux uh, implementation, but in the future you could have other implementations and we're working on this as well. Um, and this is also open source, so feel free to uh, contribute. Um, Wasm, uh, as uh, Amin said in the previous talk, uh, it's, it can be you know, kind of tricky to find the right uh, library to use. Uh, so we used um, a library called uh, Binarian. Uh, so this is a set of Wasm tool chains. It, it includes an interpreter and sufficiently maintained by the WebAssembly uh, community. That's one of the advantages of using C++, I guess. Um, so this is really, uh, it, 
it, it aims to fulfill the you know, the goals of, of WASM, uh, which is to be as easy as possible to use and then fast and then effective. And so um, you can perform different optimizations uh, using this uh, library as well. So this has been really a great uh, tool for us to use. And um, I recommend uh, you to check it out as well. Um, our future plans is to release version one of this uh, in September. And so this would have uh, all the core components, which would be the extrinsic, extrinsic API, the transaction pool, uh, Babe and Grandpa, and then also the Merkle tree as the data storage. Um, and then uh, we want to continue to do different things like um, to make a light client that could uh, connect to this and then also build maybe some kind of wallet application and uh, even integrate with Hyperledger Iroha. So uh, one of the cool things I think about Iroha is that it, uh, it really focuses on mobile applications. So we have SDKs in different uh, languages. And so if we could uh, build a link to Polkadot.re as well, you could in theory um, you know, move assets from one enterprise application to another, which would be really uh, quite a cool thing to do. Um, our repository is on GitHub, so please feel free to check it out. We just have it right now under our company uh, GitHub repo, Soromitsu slash Kagome. And everything is Apache 2 licensed, so feel free to steal this code and um, improve it. And we hope that we, we can get some pull requests from different people. Um, C++, uh, especially C++ 17, is a very, um, let's say, complex language. And uh, there's a lot of nuances. But for people who really know the language, it's also a great opportunity to contribute to, to the community. And lots of people know C++. And at the end of the day, it's not magic. Um, it's a programming language just like anything else. And so I encourage everyone to, to help um, us out with that. Um, so uh, I think that's kind of the overview that I want to present. Um, this is still, of course, a work in progress, but libptp is mostly done, and uh, consensus we should finish uh, in September. So feel free to check out our repository, and if you have any questions, uh, rather than do it now, I think I'll just yield back my time, and uh, you can talk to me. Just I'll be around all week. So thanks, and have a great discussion. <laughs>